Hi, I'm Mark Lacks, Extension Weed Scientist at The Ohio State University. Mare's tail continues to be an issue for growers, uh, no-till soybean growers uh, in Ohio. And in 2012, we again had a lot of fields where we had real issues with control. Um, that came about partly because we really didn't have a fall season that lent itself to herbicide applications. And then we had an early warm spring, um, which probably made it uh, more difficult generally to control mare's tail. We've conducted a number of mare's tail studies over the past several years. Um, really over the past five to ten years and lately what we've been trying to do is come up with more of a systems type approach that, that helps growers ensure that they'll get uh, consistent mare's tail control. A couple of things we do know about mare's tail, one is that you have to get effective burn down in the spring, um, you have to start weed free, make sure when soybeans come out of the ground there are no mare's tail there and then we know we need residual control because mare's tail has been emerging in soybeans um, even into mid to late June and those plants that emerge before the soybeans of canopies can still cause problems. Uh, behind me is one of our studies from 2012, which does a really nice job of illustrating some of the um, issues we get into with mare's tail and what some of the uh, probably better strategies are. So some of the questions we had coming into uh, 2012 were, um, you know, uh, mare's tail is larger than normal early in spring. Should I go ahead and apply? What happens if I apply in late March? Will my residual last long enough versus waiting till later in spring uh, when the mare's tail are bigger and older? Um, and this study does a really nice job of kind of uh, showing some of the differences there. Uh, not that any one study tells the whole story, but um, the sequence we have here is we have a number of treatments that went on 30 days before uh, soybean planting, so they went on about April 1st. Um, and then we have a series of treatments that went on seven days before planting. Um, and then we have a couple of treatments that went on right at planting. And so um, in a nutshell, what happened was the very early treatments, we had very effective burn down and we got into issues with whether we had uh, enough residual control. Um, the applications we made later, we started to get into more issues just with being able to burn the mare's tail down, which is what a lot of growers faced in 2012 also. So um, there's some good stuff to see here, I think. This first sequence of treatments, um, what we have is glyphosate 2,4-D applied, again, about the beginning of April with either Valor XLT at a full rate, um, Valor at a couple different rates, um, and Metribuzin at a couple different rates, and then also Spartan. Um, at a low and a high rate. This population is not ALS resistant. So typically when we apply a canopy type product or anything that has clemuron or first rate in it, um, we do get good residual control. Um, and what you see in this study is um, when you leave the clemuron out, if you move from Valor XLT to a Valor or Spartan Authority, we start to lose some control, which does really illustrate the value of, of the ALS inhibitors number one, but also that uh, once you have an, a population that's both ALS and glyphosate resistant, you're generally going to have more issues with getting good residual control. And we, we figure, based on our latest survey, probably 25 to 30 percent of our mare's tail population, populations at least are resistant to both ALS inhibitors like first rate and classic um, and also glyphosate. So that's an issue for a lot of growers. So what we see as we walk through this series of plots here is um, the very first one I'm looking at here is the glyphosate 2,4-D with a Valor XLT. Now in this first series, the glyphosate 2,4-D at 30 days ahead of planting did work. It did burn down uh, what was out here. So what we're really looking at uh, when you see mare's tail in these plots is, uh, is a lack of residual control. So the Valor XLT you can see, um, and here we are uh, sitting here at about June 26th right now. So. Um, you have an idea that's been out here approximately three months this treatment has and you can see uh, really no mare's tail in here. Um, we did spray glyphosate in here post but it's a glyphosate resistant mare's tail so that wouldn't have given us any additional control. So uh, you can see that holding very well. We don't anticipate that that early would probably hold that well all the time but you can see the value of a, of a broad spectrum product that still has some ALS activity. As we move into the next series of plots, you can see it just generally gets more difficult to get difficulty to get good control. So you can see, for example, down in here, you can see plenty of mare's tail. Soybeans are starting to canopy, but you're starting to see uh, some of this mare's tail that's going to pop above the soybeans here pretty soon, and you can see the difference here. So you've got uh, two Valor plots applied uh, the beginning of April, and you can see quite a bit of mare's tail out here. Um, so you can see, again, the burn down did work, but you've got mare's tail coming through. Um, then we have a couple of uh, Metribuzin plots, and the Metribuzin plots are probably uh, better here than the Spartan and Valor. Um, we've seen variable results. Sometimes we see Valor and Spartan better than Metribuzin, sometimes the opposite. But in these plots, um, you can see that the next two are the Metribuzin at 8 ounces and 12 ounces of product. So you can see there's some mare's tail out here, 
It doesn't appear to be as much as we just saw in the Valor plots. Um, and you can see as we move into the higher rate of Metribuzin here, um, you can see even a few fewer Maris tails. So Metribuzin looked uh, a little stronger than the Valor here. As we move into the Spartan plots, you can see that um, that real early spring application doesn't favor Spartan that much either. So the take home message here is uh, for this first series of plots is yeah, you can apply late March, early April, and probably what's going to do is ensure that you have uh, your most effective burn down. Mare's tail are small, um, so you're, you're probably going to do better with burn down given that you have decent weather, but it really does put a stretch on your residual products. Um, and one of the things we're going to see here as we look a little further on in these plots is we have some split applications of early spring followed by at planting, which sort of solved that issue. But I think in a nutshell, this demonstrates um, that if you do apply residual late March, early April, and that's the only time you use a, a residual product, you can expect to see mare's tail breaking at some pump point, and you may have some, uh, some areas of your field that look like this. This next sequence of treatments that we're looking at are those that were applied seven days before soybean planting, so more towards the end of April. So we had larger, older mare's tail um, that were generally more difficult to control. And what you really see is that, and a lot of growers did see this uh, in 2012 when they had those type of applications, just a, a more difficulty burning down mare's tail. So here again, here's your glyphosate 24D plus, plus Valor XLT, which you know we looked at in the previous sequence was pretty much clean. And again, the glyphosate 2,4-D worked worked in that sequence very well. You start to see, you know, a lot more mare's tail in here that didn't get burnt down. Uh, plants that have uh, this type of symptom where they're, you know, they sort of at the uh, branch at the bottom, they were sort of burnt down and then regrew. Growers saw a lot of that this year. Um, so here's your, here's your here's your program that really should work when it's applied that time of year. And as you look through this sequence. Um, that's the predominant thing you see that the glyphosate 2,4-D just didn't work quite well enough and so the residual component's not as critical. Although when we get to the Metribuzin treatment you'll see that Metribuzin, um, that is one of the advantages of it over Valor or Spartan Authority is that it does have uh, burn down activity and it does help burn down mare's tail and you do see that. So here's your glyphosate 2,4-D which has mare's tail in it. Um, next couple treatments and the next one's pretty much just like this are the glyphosate 2,4-D with a Valor or you maybe see a little bit more mare's tail, but again, probably the lack of burn down is sort of the major issue here. So similarly, here's your Spartan or your Authority plus uh, glyphosate plus 2,4-D is your burn down. So again, you see the major issue is we, we probably do have re reasonable residual control here, but um, we sort of lack, lack the right burn down. And then over to my right here, uh, we have the glyphosate 2,4-D with the Metribuzin treatments. Um, which you looked a little bit of a wet spot there. It looks like the Metribuzin injured, and I think based on this back part, it probably didn't. Um, but you can see the Metribuzin kicking in for burn down uh, of the mare's tail. You see in these two plots, really very few. Here's a mare's tail here. There's a little one there, and then over there, not really any mare's tail at all. So, so again, um, this particular study, um, as you move closer to planting, the Metribuzin kind of uh, worked better than the Valor or the Spartan did because of its ability to help burn down mare's tail. Uh, as well as give some residual whereas you lack the burn down component there with the Valor and the Spartan. The last couple sequences of treatments I'm showing you here are uh, really demonstrate a much more effective approach when you uh, can't get our applications on in the fall and we had a spring like we had this year. So one of the things that we mentioned uh, in a newsletter article in March was okay if you're going to go ahead and apply you know uh, burn down plus some residual now split it so that you put burn down plus maybe half your residual on in late March or early April. And then when you can finally plant, you have the option of coming back with a little bit more burn down if you need it and the rest of your residual. And sort of that it minimizes your risk um, of losing control later in the season after the soybeans have emerged. Um, and some growers did that and I think it worked fairly well, but a lot of people are resistant to doing that because it is two pre-plant applications uh, when everyone has enough workload anyway. But what you basically see in this next sort of five treatments that were all splits, it was glyphosate 2,4-D with half the residual in, in early April, um, coming back with uh, Liberty, a little bit of Liberty, and also the rest of the residual when we finally planted the soybeans. And you can basically see there are a few mare's tail here and there um, through these plots, and partly because we just didn't get enough rain after we applied some of the residual, I think. But uh, basically, the approach is very good. It sort of simulates a fall followed by spring. Your early timing is taking out all that mare's tail uh, that's come up and overwintered when it's still small, which you can generally accomplish with a late fall application also, giving you some residual to hold you till planting and then coming back with the rest. So here's your glyphosate 2,4-D with Valor XLT early. 
coming back with the rest of the Valor XLT later. We have the same thing with Valor, and then with Metribuzin, uh, and then with Spartan. And basically they all look about the same, and that's because that split spring approach, the double burn down, the double residual, just uh, looks really good, especially in a year like this. These last two plots are we're demonstrating what happens when you hold everything until you can finally plant. And obviously in some years, like in 2011, when we were wet for a, con a very long period and could finally plant, you can have very large old weeds. Um, this is even worse. For us here, this was, you know, a May planting. Their tail were still kind of old and fairly big. Um, but, but essentially what we see is the longer we wait in spring, the more issues we're going to have with a burn down if that's the only time we've tried to control mare's tail. So on my right here, um, is actually Liberty plus Metribuzin plus Valor XLT. And on my left is Glyphosate 2,4-D um, with Valor XLT. And one of the things we've been hearing from growers, we've seen in our plots here at Western also, is that uh, we just seem to have more and more issues with Glyphosate 2,4-D burndowns. When we first developed Glyphosate-resistant mare's tail, they seem to work very well. And as we've gone, had the problem develop more and more, and it's been around longer, we seem to be starting to lose some control, especially um, when we try to do it all with one sort of mid to late spring application. So here's your Glyphosate 2,4-D, which illustrates that. Uh, pretty well. Again, I think the residual component in both these probably did reasonably well, but we have a lot of plants like this um, that we can tell survived a burn down. Um, so we have that issue. The Liberty Metribuzin in this situation, which tends to be one of our better burn downs on very large mare's tail, it doesn't mean it's a completely consistent, effectively treat, consistently an effective treatment, but um, you can see fewer mare's tail in here. You do still see a kind of a few that have some uh, reasonable size to them down in here. So, um, you know, there's a, there's a among the messages that, uh, in the study are, which include, you know, applying a burn down early guarantees and more consistent burn down control, but puts stress on your residual. You know, delaying application somewhat um, you, starts to put more stress on your burn down, but the residual is probably not as critical. Uh, anytime you're willing to split your spring application, you're generally going to get more effective control. And then the final message is if you just continue to wait and try to do it all with one application um, later in spring, you know, we're just going to have more and more issues with burn down. And, and it's almost to the point that um, in a big old population, there isn't anything we can prescribe that we know can be consistently effective for burn down. Um, so again, you know, this reinforces our whole message about Mare's tail that it needs to be a, as much as you can make it a system approach, a fall application where you hopefully have some residual control um, and then coming back with a spring application where you're putting some more burn down on and the rest of your residual and again with mirrors tail your whole goal is not to have to deal with any post emergence so as we look at these soybeans here you know we're looking at glyphosate resistant mares tail in a lot of populations they would also be resistant to first rate and classic you know we have a number of plots here where we did not get effective pre-plant uh, burn down and residual control and in about another three weeks we're going to have mare's tail sticking above the beans and we're going to have a whole bunch of seed produced here also.